again to the Study Bible Bible Study, where we study the Bible with Study Bibles, and Revelation 17, 14 tells us, And these shall make war with the Lamb, and the Lamb shall conquer them, for he is the Lord of the Lords, he is King of Kings, and they who are with him are called and chosen and faithful. God bless and amen, and welcome back to our Timothy Study, session number 14 or so. Now, Chronicles. 29 King David's Prayer Blessed are you, Lord, God of Israel, our Father, from eternity to eternity. Yours, Lord, are greatness and might, majesty, victory, and splendor. For all in heaven and on earth is yours, Lord, is kingship. You are exalted as head over all. Riches and glory are from you, and you have dominion over all. In your hand are power and might. It is yours to give greatness and strength to all. Therefore, O God, we give you thanks. We praise the majesty of your name. El Shaddai, right? Lord God Most High. Now, another more likely interpretation is that men were branded on their conscience their ownership marks of the spirit of evil the devil's seal these false teachers have a burning sense in their own sin stamped upon their consciousness and all effort to spread their heresy is met with stinging realization that they are hypocritical liars actuated by carnal self now these impostors pretend that higher spiritual excellence or greater holiness should be sought through legalism and spurious asceticism, which involve celibacy and abstinence from food, forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from meats. One has well said, there is no doubt that this that these point to an incipient Gnostic Gnosticism. Gnosticism with dualistic views of matter which found its climax in the heretical teachings of the second century. The apostle's strong opposition to these practices is due to their implications. He argues that the prohibitations such as these are in conflict with divine ordinance. Now, God does say, be fruitful and multiply and take a wife unto yourself and leave your father's house and go create your own family and create your own more, create more Christian speakers and preachers and people to propagate the word, right? Best way to make a men and women of God or to create them yourselves as one man said some time ago, not too recently, but recent enough where I can, for some reason, remember he said that. But anyways, Paul's opposition to this teaching was not because he opposed proper fasting and the proper regulation of conjugal relationships in order to accomplish the proper Christian duties. These things indicate moral discipline, but in these heretical doctrines were tolerated that they would lead to the acceptance of the Gnostic heresy, which taught that all matter belonged to the evil one, for God, they said, had nothing to do with the creation of matter. Ultimately, this would lead to the conclusion that God had not come in the flesh thus denying the humanity of our Lord. If these teachings were true, we would be without a divine Savior, and salvation would be by works. Thus Christ would be robbed of the preeminence of all things. But Christ did create the church. Now, in refuting these false prohibitations, Paul emphasizes a basic truth about the Christian and his world. God created all things they forbade, and since he created them to be received by them that no one believe the truth, they are not forbidden to the believers who use them as God planned. Now God created all things they forbade, and since he created them to be received by them that no and believe the truth, they are not to be forbidden to believers who use them as God, God planned. Every creature of God is good. The character and the purpose of God the Creator ensures his lawfulness of the use by his children of that which he created them for. 
and he created for them. His omniscience knows what they need. His omnipotence and benefits provides for their needs. The requirement made of those who receive these provisions is that they receive with thanksgiving and are sanctified through the word of God and prayer. They must be used and warranted by the word of God and their reception must be accompanied by a prayerful thanksgiving to God for his abundant provision. Many see these words as a reference to the customs asking a blessing before meals, which you should be doing before you eat. You should always be giving thanks because you're not the one who actually put that food in front of you. Well, technically you are, but not not that technically. But false teachers are to be Oh, here we go. False teachers are to be refuted and resisted. Now, by the declaration of sound doctrine, if thou put, now if thou put the brethren in mind of these things, thou shalt be a good minister of, a good minister of Christ to Jesus, nourished in the words of the faith and the good doctrine which thou hast followed until now. But refuse profane in the old wives' fables and exercise thyself into godliness, for bodily exercise is profitable for a little, but godliness is profitable for all things, having the promise of life which is now and that of which is to come. Faithful is saying and the worthy of all exception. For this end we labor and strive because we have hope set on the living God who is the Savior of all men, especially of them that believe these things command and teach. Now Paul's earnest desires that Timothy be a good minister of Christ Jesus, nourished in the words of the faith and the good doctrine which, the, which he had followed until now. It was, it was Timothy's responsibility of to his fellow workers to alert them to the dangers facing them within as well from without. Defection from the Christian faith was an was actual present peril. One way Timothy could check the defection was by bold declaration of the truth by which he was being nourished. Since childhood, Paul declares Timothy had been bred in the precepts of our faith and it is carefully instructed in the truths of religion which had preserved him in sound, which had preserved him sound in the faith and pure and pure in morals. Now he must fulfill the personal and official duty by putting the brethren in mind and those things they already knew but had forgotten. He is not to be a dictator but must be a firm because of his authoritative commission from God and the nature and the aims of the false teachers to be encountered. His teaching must be positive as to leave no reason for idle speculation and plainness so as to be easily understood by even the simplest of those committed to his care. Such a declaration of truth strengths him who shares it for outlines on the Christian pastors in 1 Timothy, a good minister of Jesus Christ. Now the good minister must propagate the good doctrine. In doing so, he must refuse profane and old wives' fables. He must have nothing to do with them. He must refuse to become involved with them on baseless traditions and gossipy fables. There is nothing sacred about them. They are senseless and absurd. Despite their apparent references to God, they are actually godless. They are related to the doctrines of demons. Instead of wasting time with such senseless trifles, exercise thyself rather unto godliness. The man of God has something better to do than to amuse his imagination with the imagination of others. He has to exercise himself by strenuous efforts and true piety in heart and life. The man of God has something better to do than to amuse his imagination or the imagination of others. Hashtag. Anyways. He has to exercise himself by strenuous efforts to true piety in heart and life. His question is personal holiness and life 
of practical godliness. Bodily exercise is profitable for a little, but godliness is profitable for all things. Now, Paul does not deny the value of the body when he kept it in its true place, but the place that is subordinate to the spiritual life, the minister who would be at his best service to God and man needs to cultivate his physical body that will not only involve refraining from some things, but participation in proper exercises to develop a sound body. Now, when self-denial has for its goal the development of spiritual life, such is to be commended, if it is when it becomes the end itself, it indicates an absurd and profane theophysy of which the discipline of the body, the chief or only practical expression. Now godliness or true and pure religion make the present life deeper, richer and holier through the knowing, through the loving of God. The godly life is the best life one can live for. The physical life is limited, but the godly life holds promise of the life which now is and of that which is to come. It is one of the best of both worlds, joy in this world and eternal life in the world to come. The assurance that the promise attached to godliness is trustworthy, backed by the assertion faithful is the saying and worthy of all acceptation. This statement whose truth whose truth can gainsay. This is a statement whose truth none can gainsay. Every man has within his power to put the promise to the fullest test. Here are some words that you may trust. And First Chronicles chapter 29, David's Prayer. Blessed are you, Lord God of Israel, our Father, from eternity to eternity. Yours, Lord, are greatness and might and majesty, victory and splendor. For all in heaven and on earth is yours. Lord's your, Lord, Lord, yours is kingship. You are exalted as your head over all. Riches and glory are from you, and you have dominion over all. In your hand are power and might. It is yours to give greatness and strength to all. Therefore, our God, we give you thanks. We praise you. We praise the majesty of your name. In the name of Jesus Christ, to the glory of God the Father, we pray. And Timothy 6.11, But thou, O man of God, flee these things, and follow after righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, and meekness. Fight the good fight of faith, lay hold of eternal life, whereunto thou art also called, and hast professed a good profession before many witnesses. And this is the Study Bible Bible Study, where we study the Bible with study Bibles. And Revelation 17, 14 tells us, And these shall make war with the Lamb, and the Lamb shall conquer them. For he is Lord of lords, he is King of kings, and they who are with him are called and chosen and faithful. God bless and amen.